Okay, so the Eagles search continues for an answer at slot corner with Philly working out a former first round pick and signing a guy back to the practice squad. What did James Bradbury have to say about potentially playing the nickel? Plus, CJ Gardner Johnson is sadly out for the year, but how does that affect the birds? And let's talk about the biggest threat to Sean Desai's defense against the Bucks. But first, let's run it. What's up guys, in case anyone's new to the channel, I'm Josh and I cover the birds. All right, so we know that Jalen Hurts has struggled a bit to begin the season, or at least compared to what we're accustomed to, but he's still led the team to a 2-0 record while being off, which is why I'm not really worried. Plus, I think as we all still know, this dude's just different, which is exactly how Donovan McNabb described him, saying, I asked him after his shoulder injury last season against the Bears when he said he was probably only 65 to 70% good, saying, so are you going to play? And Jalen said, what do you think? Sometimes you just got to do the job yourself. To where McNabb said, good, because if you weren't thinking that way, I was going to call you soft. Which, come on, number five knows a thing or two about playing through pain. Since I'm sure we all remember his broken ankle game against the Cardinals when he literally broke his fibula on the opening possession. Or maybe it was a broken ankle. But like my guy Mike said, fib, ankle, perineum, you know, the same general vicinity. You had 12 brothers and sisters? Eight. Yeah, 12 sounds better. Either way, he stayed in the game, throwing for over 250 yards and four touchdowns en route to an Eagles win. And while I certainly can't imagine doing anything close to that, I definitely love having guys like that on my team. Of course, hopefully we can get healthy and avoid as many injuries as we had in the first couple weeks. Although one injury outside of Philadelphia that could still affect the birds is CJ Gardner Johnson, as it was reported that CJ GJ tore his pectoral and is now out indefinitely and potentially for the remainder of the season. Okay, which first off, as sick as some people are on Twitter regarding injuries. I never like to see injuries for anyone, so hopefully CJ can make a quick recovery. But there are some implications for the Eagles draft picks next year. As Nick Court pointed out, even if Chauncey Gardner-Johnson ends up missing the rest of the season, it may not negatively impact the Eagles compensatory pick projection, as they also have TJ Edwards as an alternative to keep their bottom line projection at one third and three fifths. And just in case for a refresher, the Birds got a third for Javon Hargrave and then fifths for Isaac Samalu, Andre Dillard, and CJ Gardner-Johnson and TJ Edwards. All right, you're probably saying, wait, that's more than four, but technically you're only allowed four comp picks in an offseason, so the Eagles will get the best four, which means as long as TJ Edwards stays healthy and the other guys mentioned, then nothing should negatively affect the 2024 draft picks. Yes, I realize that's maybe a selfish spin on injuries, but at least wanted to keep everyone updated, and like I said, never wish any players to get hurt on any team, which we definitely have our fair share, with Avante Maddox also suffering a torn pectoral muscle against the Vikings, and we continue to wonder how will Howie Roseman look to fill that void, or perhaps the they keep the options in-house like Sirianni suggested on Monday and then just add some needed depth. I mean, it seems like that's probably going to be the case after Dave Zingaro shared the Eagles have signed cornerback Tijuan Mullen back to their practice squad, who I'm sure we all remember spent a few days on the P-Squad in early September. Of course, Mullen was an undrafted free agent that was a member of the Chargers in the 2023 preseason, which then led to the Bolts beat blog saying the Eagles signing Mullen was probably bad news for the Bolts. Although I guess he didn't impress enough because he was released earlier this month, but now, hey, he's back. Except I'm not so sure the birds are done. After the Eagles officially worked out William Jackson III, who was a first round pick for the Bengals in 2016, having played the last two seasons in Washington, where he totaled 10 pass deflections and zero interceptions in 16 games, while being targeted 24 times in coverage in 2022, allowing 7.9 yards per target and an opposing quarterback rating of 121.9. Yeah, not exactly stellar. Unfortunately, those numbers weren't much better in 2021 when Jackson was targeted 66 times, allowing 7.5 five yards per target with an opposing quarterback rating of 100.4. Okay, so if you're like me, I'm kind of wondering what is the upside with his potential signing, which NFL insider Jordan Schultz alluded to the fact that Jackson is six feet tall, who runs a sub 4 4 40 time and is finally healthy after dealing with a bulging disc in his back last season. So this definitely feels like a potential move how he could make grabbing a first rounder with hopeful upside who's dealt with past injuries. Except Jackson doesn't exactly answer your slot corner question, since like outside the birds pointed out, Jackson doesn't have much experience playing playing in the slot. He's played 3,864 snaps as an outside CB and just 203 snaps in the slot. So it seems like a mix of James Bradbury, Justin Evans, and Mario Goodrich will help replace Avante Maddox, which is exactly what it looks like to me since remember Bradbury continually lined up in the slot during camp and even said when asked about the potential change that it suits me, saying, I think also having me take some reps in there can help us for the future because offenses are so developed. They've got so many weapons on teams like tight ends and bigger receivers and they line up guys wherever. There's also wide 
receivers in the backfield. So having a corner, a bigger corner that can line up inside and take nickel reps or even line up at safety, I feel like it really helps you as a play caller. All right, as we've talked about previously, it doesn't sound like Bradbury or Decide view this as a permanent change, but there's definitely a lot to benefit. Of course, I understand the concern and several people mentioning in the comments to keep Bradbury on the outside since that's where he's best at. Add on top of that, the fact that Josh Job gave up six catches for 106 yards and two touchdowns on 10 targets against Minnesota. And yeah, I can understand the concern, but this is where I think Eli Ricks can come in, especially with Ricks ranking as the fifth highest graded coverage defender in the preseason with a 90.2 coverage grade, allowing a 54.9 passer rating while defending four passes, as well as coming up with an impressive interception return for a touchdown. I mean, they don't call him pick six Ricks for nothing. Plus we all know this dude's a gamer. I get it. You could say Ricks did that in the preseason, so it's not as big of a deal, which is fair, except let's not forget Ricks was absolutely locked down going up against the Colts starters, saying after making the roster, it's only the start. Yeah, don't they all say that though? Yeah, probably, but what better option is there? Maybe I'm in the minority, yet I don't really feel like Keely Ringo is ready to be asked to play the slot or outside for that matter, but either way, you've got to sign somebody for the depth like we talked about, so if it was up to me, I'd bring in a vet, let them help the younger guys, and then let's see what Eli Ricks can do. I don't know, maybe that's crazy and too early to talk about doing something like that, but let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments. Whatever you do, you've got to find an answer though, since like Paul Domowicz wrote, the seven pass passing touchdowns the Eagles have given up in the first two games are the most in the NFL. Last year, they gave up 22 all season and only allowed three in a game twice to the Packers in week 12 and the Cowboys in the week 16 loss. Three of the seven touchdown passes the defense has given up have been to tight ends, which is an alarming number because it equals the total number of TD passes the Eagles gave up to tight ends in the entire 2022 season. Plus six of the seven touchdown passes the Eagles have allowed have been in the red zone, whereas last year they gave up 11 red zone touchdown passes all season. Not not great, Bob. Yeah, not great at all. Sure, injuries always play a factor, but if there's one takeaway against the defense, it's start the opposing team's QB and tight end in fantasy. Hang on, I do think it'll get better, but will it be better this week against the Bucks? I don't know. I mean, this isn't your traditional Baker Mayfield we're talking about, with Mark Schofield saying, Mayfield's completed 69.1% of his throws this season for 490 yards and three touchdowns without throwing an interception, and his QB rating of 66.4 through two games is 10th in the league, where his adjusted net yards per attempt of 7.91 is fifth best in the league. So perhaps Mayfield is a passer who you can count on when it matters most. All right, forgive me if I'm not willing to go that far yet. Plus with the Philly pass rush of Jalen Carter's pressures, Jordan Davis looking like an absolute beast and Sweaty Jay wreaking havoc, it's not going to be easy for Bake. Although the Bucks have only allowed one sack so far on the season thanks to getting the ball out quickly and Mayfield showing an impressive ability to hit the open receiver. In particular, like last week versus Chicago, where according to Next Gen Stats, Mayfield was 14 for 17 with 223 yards and a touchdown under pressure, which is tied for the most passing yards under pressure in a game over the last four seasons. So it's not exactly going to be easy, especially with guys like Mike Evans and Chris Godwin on the outside. Fortunately, it sounds like James Bradbury, who's been going through the concussion protocol and Reed Blankenship dealing with the rib, will be able to go Monday night. So you may not have to fully address the slot corner concern in this game, as I'd imagine you'd have Slay and Bradbury match up with Evans and Godwin, regardless of where they line up. And no offense to the Bucks tight end Kate Otten, but he doesn't exactly scare me like TJ Hawkinson did, although he could still be worth starting in fantasy. This is the part where I should say there's a disclaimer for any fantasy advice I give you. My best bet is take Goddard on the over on the yard. Well, apologies to any of those that I cost any money or maybe a fantasy win, but this is the week I'm telling you, or I hope. With Goddard admitting today, my part in the passing game hasn't been as big as I want it to be yet, but I believe that will come. But at least in the run game, that gives me an opportunity to go in there and kind of impose my will on people. Okay, I still believe this will be as weak, but ultimately love to hear the team first attitude there. Of course, it didn't take long for some Twitter arguments to bring back up the AJ to Jalen sideline fight. Relax, that's sarcasm. And Sirianni finally weighed in on how big of a deal it actually was. Yeah, all these guys in this building genuinely, you know, love each other and genuinely are happy for each other's success. Do they want to contribute um, because they know they're capable of? Of course. Um, do, do sometimes frustrations run high because they're not able to? Of course, those are all part of it. But I'd say, you know, uh, on a frustration scale of what, you know, obviously wasn't able, wasn't able to know fully about it until after the game. 
But on the frustration scale of what I've seen between receivers and and quarterbacks or whatever. I mean, we're talking about a two out of 10. Okay, and Sirianni also went on to say that the team does need to get some guys more involved, which is why I'd also expect to see AJ Brown have a bigger game on Monday as well. But who do you guys think scores the first Eagles touchdown in the game? Speaking of the first touchdown score, we'll be doing a live drawing tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern for our 10 finalists who predicted that Jalen Hurts QB sneak last week, where the winner will end up getting an autographed DeAndre Swift helmet. And in case you want to get in on more of the action, I've got a DraftKings promo in the description where a $5 bet gets you $200 in bonus bets. The Birds also worked out a couple more guys in tight end EJ Jenkins, running backs John Kelly and Brian Kobach, as well as linebackers Isaiah Moore and Ellerson Smith. And you might remember the name Ellerson Smith since he was selected in the fourth round of the 2021 draft by the Giants for his six foot seven frame and crazy athletic score. I mean, an interesting move, but he didn't really pan out for the Giants, so we'll see. And then there's Isaiah Moore, who Bo Wolf said is interesting since he was injured in camp in Kansas City, but is a three-time captain and thumper at NC State. While draft analyst Dane Brugler wrote, an assignment sound run defender thanks to his play recognition and take on tackling skills, he projects as a rookie backup in the mold of Anthony Walker. I don't know, it feels like how he's just doing his due diligence, but who knows, maybe something comes to fruition after all. All right, less than a week until more Eagles football, and it wouldn't surprise me if we saw an addition to the roster tomorrow. The question is, who will it be? This has been the Philly Special.